Oh, Mom, Anakin whispered. Silent as a shadow, the Padawan slipped through the encampment, moving hut to hut, flat against walls, and belly crawling across open spaces, working his way gradually toward the hut he felt held his mother. He came against its side at last and put his hands against the soft skin wall, feeling the emotions and pain of the person within. A quick glance around the front showed him the two Tuscan guards, sitting a short distance in front of the door. Anakin drew and ignited his lightsaber, then crouched low, shielding the glow as much as he could. He slid the energy blade through the wall and easily cut the material away. Then, without even pausing to see if any Tuscans were inside, he crawled through. Mom, he breathed again, and his legs weakened beneath him. The room was lit by dozens of candles and by a shaft of pale moonlight streaming through a hole in the roof, illuminating the figure of Shmi, tied, facing against a rack to the side of the tent. Her arms were outstretched, bound at bloodied wrists, and her face, when she turned to the side, showed the weeks of beatings. Anakin quickly cut her free and gently lowered her from the perch, into his arms, and then down to the floor. Mom, 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 he whispered softly. Anakin knew that she was alive, though she did not immediately respond and had come down so pitifully limp. He could feel her in the force, though she was a thin, thin sensation. He cradled her head and kept repeating her name softly, and finally, Shmi's eyelids fluttered open as much as she could manage through the swelling and dried blood. Annie, she whispered back. He could feel her wheezing as she tried to speak and knew that many of her ribs had been crushed. Annie, is it you? Gradually, her eyes began to focus upon him and he could see a thin smile of recognition coming to her battered face. I'm here, Mom, he told her. You're safe now. Hang on. I'm going to get you out of here. Annie. Annie? Shmi replied, and she tilted her head, the way she often had when Anakin was a boy, seeming quite amused by him. You look so handsome. Save your strength, Mom, he said, trying to calm her. We've got to get away from here. My son, Shmi went on, and she seemed to be in a different place than Anakin, a safer place. My grown-up son, I knew you'd come back to me. I knew it all along. Anakin tried again to tell her to lie still and save her strength, but the words simply wouldn't come out of his mouth. I'm so proud of you, Annie. So proud. I missed you so much. I missed you too, Mom, but we can talk later. Now I am complete, Shmi announced then. And she looked straight up, past Anakin, past the hole in the ceiling, to the shining moon, it seemed. Somewhere deep inside, Anakin understood. Just stay with me, Mom, he pleaded, and he had to work very hard to keep the desperation out of his voice. I'm going to make you well again. Everything's going to be fine. I love... Shmi started to say, but then she went very still, and Anakin saw the light leave her eyes. Anakin could hardly draw his breath. Wide-eyed with disbelief, he lifted Shmi to his breast and rocked her there for a long time. She couldn't be gone. She just couldn't. He pulled her back again, staring into her eyes, silently pleading with her to answer him. But there was no light there, no flicker of life. He hugged her close, rocking her. Then he laid her back to the floor and gently closed her eyes. Anakin didn't know what to do. He sat motionless, staring at his dead mother, then looked up, his blue eyes blazing with hatred and rage. 
he replayed all of the recent events of his life in his head, wondering what he might have done differently, done better to keep Shmi alive. He should never have left her here in the first place, he realized. Should never have let Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan take him away from Tatooine without bringing his mother along as well. She said she was proud of him, but how could he deserve her pride if he could not even save her? He wanted Shmi to be proud of him, wanted to tell his mom all about the things that had come into his life, his Jedi training, all the good work he had already done, and most of all, about Padme. Oh, how he wanted his mom to get to know Padme. She would have loved her. How could she not? And Padme would have loved her. Now what was he going to do? The minutes slipped past, and Anakin just sat there, immobilized by his confusion, by a budding rage and the most profound sense of emptiness he had ever known. Only when the pale light began to grow around him, making the low-burning candle seem even thinner, did he even remember where he was. He looked about, wondering how he might get his mother's body out of there, for he certainly wasn't going to leave it to the Tusken Raiders. He could hardly move, though. There seemed a profound pointlessness to it all, a series of motions without meaning. At that time, the only meaning, the only purpose that Anakin could fathom was that of the rage building within him, an anger at losing someone he did not wish to give up. Some small part of him warned him not to give in to that anger, warned him that such emotions were of the dark side. Then he looked at Shmi lying there so still, seeming at peace but covered with the clear evidence of all the pain that had been inflicted upon her poor body these last days. The Jedi Padawan climbed to his feet and took up his lightsaber, then boldly strode through the door. The two Tusken guards gave a yelp and lifted their staves, rushing for him. But the blue glowing blade ignited, and in a flash of killing light, Anakin took them down, left and right. The rage was not sated. 